today we've got a radio which has been sent in by one of the subscribers to this channel whose name is John now this is supposed to be a Harvard so when we lose some of this packaging Have our photo to MPA. And this is one he's bought on eBay, and he thought it was going to be a radio with the Cybernet 134 chassis. Unfortunately for him, it's not, it's the Cybernet 002 chassis, which is the one also used in the Amstrad and the Mustang. And a host of, host of others, and uh, they work very well. But that's not the one that John wanted. I think cause that's something that needs to be addressed for a start. Now he's already been inside. He says the screws are in a bag inside. I can see straight away. It's had soldering around the synthesizer chip. It's had soldering around the audio chip. And we've got the protection diode on the wrong side of the board. We've also got the possibly the wrong resistor in there. And it's one ohm. I'm sure they're about four point something. Anyway, I'll look that up in the manual. But other than that, it looks in nice condition. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work. So let's have a look. Well, first of all, we've got to do something about this socket situation because that isn't good enough. The trouble is, where do we get a socket from? Well, the only answer to that is I don't know if we've got a scrap set or not. So I'll have a look, look, see what we've got. Right, well, we've got uh, something just about um, going on this radio now. We've got it uh, a power lead connected. What we've had to do, because we can't get those power sockets uh, which was missing on this, is to file out the case to put in a different type of two pin one. The type you often find on communicator NI440s and uh, those dreadful Harvard Good Buddy radios. In fact, we've whipped that socket off a scrap Harvard chassis, although I've got new ones in stock. And uh, the resistor should be 3.3 ohms and not uh, 1 ohm, which was fitted. A quick check on transmit revealed it was doing 5 watts with the, one watt, uh, with the 1 ohm resistor, and that's brought it straight down to 4 watts, as it should be. Um, it, it's all well and good, but uh, legality aside, it's, um, it makes no difference, and all it does is put a strain on the, uh, on the transmit PA stage. So, what I want to do though is to go through the <coughs> VCO for a start with you. Because it's quite important on these sets. I'm using the Fidelity 2001 manual, it's the same chassis. And if we look at the layout from the service manual, uh, we'll just zoom in on that. The first thing we need to do is the test point for the VCO. is just here and it's capacitor 9 which is the far leg so it's that when I get myself where I, yeah it's that capacitor there and it's the far leg which we're monitoring so now I'm going to zoom out so that you can see the test meter as well there we go just about and oh, we we'll just go in from there we go what what it says in the service manual is on receive on channel one I know this radio isn't receiving because it's got a fault but it may well be that the synthesizer is receiving so on receive we need to be on channel one so I'm just going to select channel one and 
I have got the negative test clip, I will have in a moment, connected to one of the cans. This is a floating chassis radio. And so, oh, there's a dodgy looking crocodile clip lead. And so we can't go to the negative or the normal chassis. What we have to do is to go to one of the little cans there. We use that as an earth point. So that's my earth connected. And so we need to somehow get the meter onto the test prod on too. Oh, that's fallen off. Doesn't like that can, does it? There we go, we've got 2.8 volts and we should have two. Now, I mean, that's not stupidly out, is it? So, let's see. So we need to adjust transformer one. Quite a short lead on that. Uh, and transformer one is that one. So we're just going to knock that down a fraction. These radios are quite susceptible to channels dropping out. At one end or the other, and this is of course why. I should be using a non-metallic tool, so... Uh, it's a just and, and hope, you know. Okay, there we have it. So we've got 2.09 on that test point. So now what we need to do is to go on to transmit and check that we've got 2 volts. Once again on that same test point. So I'm going to go into transmit now. We've got 0 0.5, <clears throat> so that's out. So we need to adjust CT1 to bring the VCO in lock. So we're still on channel one. We're monitoring that and CT1 is the trimmer just there. It's a red trimmer capacitor. So it's one of these multi-finger shuffles. So we'll try and get the test prod on there. Which we have. I'm going to transmit. Which as you can see is 0 0.45 and adjust the VCO. There we are, 2.04. So that wasn't transmitting on channel 1. So it's lucky I checked it. Now on channel 40, if we switch to channel 40, we should have 4 to 5 volts on transmit on that same test point. And we've got 3. 3, 4. It's in lock. That's near enough. We've got 3 point something on receive as well, so it's in lock. So although it says 4 to 5 volts, that's absolutely fine. So that's the VCO. And so that's very important because they're quite susceptible to being fiddled with and channels dropping out, and that's usually the reason. And let's say this was an eBay thing, and it was supposed to be working, and uh, it wasn't. At least when we buy radios off eBay. It really doesn't matter whether they work or not because they're being bought to do these demonstration videos if we haven't had them through the normal course of repairs coming in. So, I'm going to go now to channel 20. So we're in the middle of the band and we start with doing the normal alignment. And straight away we're doing 3.8 watts. 
transmit, the first transmit one, I'll just zoom in a bit for you. The first transmit one. Is there, that's Pete. The second transmit one is Transformer 3. And that's Pete. Transformer 3. Transformer 4. You just swap to the yellow tool. Sometimes this has got wax in and this one hasn't. And that's now. 4.0 something watts it's just um, where it perfect actually and then finally we've got L8 which is just behind the, the green resistor there, I'll just move the set slightly unfortunately this radio's got a broken core on that one which is very frustrating. I'll just pause the video. Okay, what we're going to do behind the scenes is we're going to just change the core uh, in that. I've got a scrap chassis. Um, oh, that first scrap chassis I've pulled up has got a broken core as well. Anyway, we'll sort that off uh, camera, but for this test, we're already doing 4 watts, so that's fine at the moment. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to check the low power works. It's a little switch at the back. It isn't adjustable, so it either works or it doesn't. In fact, it would be easier to use that at all. It's supposed to be 400 milliwatts on low power. It's doing... Let's have a look. 390 milliwatts. It's about spot on. So push that back into the normal high power 4 watt setting. So we now need to really calibrate the S meter. And the transmit meter is preset RV1. And RV1 is the one just there. So I'm going to go into transmit. Let's have a look at what this meter is showing. It's supposed to be into the centre of the red zone. There's a red zone. It's just slightly low of that. we go, that is set. So that was RV1. Now, these radios sometimes have been messed about with and you end up with 7.5 kilohertz deviation. So I don't know where we are on the deviation on this, but we'll just have a look. <whistles> wow, it's right over the top. <laughs> I'll tell you where it is. Just with the whistle test. It's 14 kilohertz deviation. There really are some silly people out there. It must be transmitting on three channels at once. Right. So I'll just get the little um, oscillator we have. Although um, the whistle test is okay, I do like to use the uh, an, an instrument to set it. Deviation is the preset just there, I think it's RV3. That sets a 2.2, I want it to be between 2.2 .2 to 2.5. <whistles> That's still over the top with the whistle test. Just set it again. just do is we can switch the other camera on. Now we're on the sub picture we've now got the other camera so I will just put the oscillator back on. You can see we've kind of got uh, 1.9 there. If I do the whistle test it just peaks at two and a half. Wallow. That's where we want it to be and that's what it's doing. And whilst I've got that camera on, I'll just show you the transmit power. We're on the um, 30 watt range on this instrument, 
So that's 30, that's 5, and that's 4. So when I press transmit, you just see it's 4 there. And that is transmit set up. We've done the VCO, we've done the transmit, we've checked the high low power works, and we haven't put, made sure it's on frequency. Um, 2779130, it's just slightly high, that's absolutely fine because it should be sent 2779125. And crystals drop with age, so that gives it a little bit of leeway. So that's something that's actually set correctly. So I'll meet you on the receive side of this video.